What up, everybody? It's Aaron here with Robert, and welcome to Get Your Geek On's Talking Geek. Hey, everyone. This week, big week of news. We got a lot of stu- stuff to cover. We're going to be talking Star Trek. We've got TV series like Halo, Peacemaker, yes. The Boys, and even maybe some speculation about a certain character who will not be named uh, and who maybe remains in a certain location showing up in Multiverse of Madness. We're going to talk about it. So I'm excited. Let's dive in. What do you want to talk about first? What do you let's want to go with the thing I know the most about Star Trek, you know, because I love oh, yeah. Star Trek so much. Yeah. I mean, the th- let's be honest. We're going to talk about Star Trek today. You're going to say everything about Star Trek, and then we're going to get to Halo, and it's just all me. Yeah, uh, you got so. that, right? Like, you know everything about it, so you're good. Master Chief. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's the blue guy, remember? It's the blue right. one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, well, yeah, Star Trek. So, J.J. Um, Abrams rebooted Star Trek in 2009 with right. our new cast, which includes Chris Pine, Zachary Quinto, uh, Zoe um, Saldana, um, and, uh, you know, several other big name actors, uh, Simon Pegg, uh, is on there, uh, Carl Urban, um, you oh, know, so there's just, Urban. there's just a, a, a huge cast of characters that are kind of rebooting, um, you know, the main, uh, characters from the original show. So we got Kirk and Spock and Bones and Uhura and all that good stuff. Um, and they've made three movies in that, uh, run. And then there's <clears> been... You know, it, there's been rumors of a fourth movie being made for I don't even know how long it's been, you know, probably ever since the, the third one came out, which has got to be, I mean, six or seven years ago now. Like it's been it's been a bit um, yeah. since that third one came out. Um, and, you know, the first one, I think, was pretty much universally liked. People really liked the reboot. They thought it was, um, you know, a, a good update of, of the series. I think most people were pretty sour on mm-hmm. the second one, Star Trek Into Darkness, which is kind of just a it's a poor reimagining of Wrath of Khan. I was going to say, um, yeah. And it's it's definitely not as good as the original Wrath of Khan. I thought they bounced back with the third one, Star Trek Beyond. I really enjoyed that that movie. Um, I thought it was a very fun adventure um, and, uh, you know, brought in some new characters. We had uh, Sofia Boutella join the cast, Idris Elba played the villain. Um, and I, I really enjoyed that one. And so I've been actually wanting another movie in this series for yeah. quite some time. And we got an announcement that uh, we are getting another movie in this franchise that they're hoping to start shooting by the end of this year, that they're planning on bringing the original cast back and that it might even include, which this has been a rumor for a long time, is that they wanted to bring back a certain actor who we hadn't seen since the opening minutes of the first movie, but who has since become a genuine movie star, Chris Hemsworth. Um, Because in the opening movie, Chris Hemsworth plays uh, Kirk's father who sacrifices himself to save everyone else and dies. Um, And there's been rumors for a long time that they were going to try and figure out a way to bring him back. So whether they're going to travel through time and like pluck him out right right before that happens right. or grab him from a different timeline and somehow um i think that you know they're they're trying to figure out a way to bring chris hemsworth back and i think that would be a really interesting exploration and, and it could be great to have you know kirk the son have to you know like have mm-hmm. this relationship with his with his father who he's never known i mean he, yeah. his mom was was giving birth to him as his father was sacrificing himself. So he's never known his father. He's grown up with this idea of his father. He went into the academy in memory of his father, all these things, but he's never actually had a relationship. So I think that could be a super interesting it exploration. Um, and so I don't know if that'll happen, but I'm just excited for another Star Trek movie. I like yeah. Star Trek and I like this series. What say and- you? And I mean, I like the actors. I like uh, Zachary Quintino, uh, Quinto. Uh, he was in originally in Heroes, is I think where I saw him first. He played uh, Siler in that one, I believe. Yeah. And then, um, I mean, if you bring Chris Henworth, I love his acting. I think he's good. Uh, like you said, uh, Urban, I like him as well. Like all these guys mm-hmm. are really good actors. So I'm always yeah. interested in. I love J.J. Abrams. I love his work. I think he's going to do a great job. Yeah, uh, I don't know if he's coming back for this one. He did the first he? two. He did not do the third one. Um, oh, that's right. I, he they left haven't, the third one. They haven't confirmed. I don't think who who is going to be directing this one. Well, so fingers crossed they get him back. I mean, I'm excited. I've seen the first one of these. I've never saw the second or third one, because uh, kind of like 
a lot of people bash the second one. So that's kind of yeah. why I didn't watch it. And then I was like, well, why am I going to watch the third one if the second one wasn't good? The third one is but, good. You should check it out. I'll check and it you out. don't. And I would say you don't have to watch the second one to watch the third one. Like, just skip it. Yeah, I think the second one, you know, certainly, uh, you know, like you get more character stuff, but it's not like you're going to plop into number three and you're going to be like, wait, who are these characters? Like they they're, they don't really introduce anyone new to the crew okay. or anything like that. Like, so yeah, I think, I think you could, uh, if you wanted to, you could just skip number two and watch number three. I might just go watch three then. Cause yeah, like that, it was a fun series. I watched it. Now I know in the past when we had um, Shatner and all them in it, they did play around with time. Didn't they back then? Oh yeah. Too? So. All, all the time, all the time there was, I mean, famously, uh, the original Star Trek series in the 60s had like no budget, right? Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, like they, you know, used Christmas tree lights for, you know, like uh, certain lighting, you know, elements. They, right. you know, to to do the transporter effect, they would like, you know, erase parts of the film and then, you know, just run it through. And so that's what it made it look like that. Um, they would pull random delivery people off the street and be like, we need an extra, here you go. Um, mm-hmm. But part of that no budget was, you know, they were on the uh, the studio lots out there making their TV show. And sometimes they didn't really have a good costume budget. And so it'd be like, well, we've got all these costumes from that Western movie that was made. Let's go to a Western planet. (laughs) Then they would just dress everybody up in cowboy stuff and go to a Western planet or they'd go to a gangster planet or, you know, I mean, so Star Wars, Star Trek has has kind of always, you know, been open to doing things like that. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I think um, time travel is certainly been a portion of these movies i mean it was even in the 2009 reboot you know they went through time Mm -hmm. um or the villain came through time you know and uh destroyed uh vulcan uh which is you know spock's planet and got to meet you know leonard nimoy came back for that movie i think it was back for into darkness as well um you know and and so we got you know this time sort of time traveling Spock. I mean, he, mm. he wasn't really time traveling because he was left in his old timeline and then, you know, caught up in the present. Right. Um, but it's just one of those things where, yeah, we've, we've seen time manipulation for sure in Star Trek. Uh, so it would not Wibbly be, wobbly time yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be anything out of the ordinary to do something like that. Yeah, no. And that's why I'm interested in it. I, again, I like time, like the time thing and like messing around with it. So We'll see. We'll see where it goes. I'm excited for it. Let's do it. I, I definitely Get another Star it. Trek movie. I want to go. I want to see it. Exactly. So moving to more sci-fi stuff, though. Yeah. Guys, stick with Halo and the Master Chief premiering on Paramount Plus. Actually, was it like March 24th, I believe? Something I think like so. That. Yeah, I think it's coming up next month. Yeah, it's, I think it's like um, the 24th. So and yeah, they, March got, 24th. they got a big announcement this week crazy big announcement so it hasn't come out it's about six weeks away and they already got greenlit for a season two so paramount has ordered a season two of halo six weeks beforehand uh i'm interested in it you know this isn't the first time companies have done this amazon's already done it for like lord of the rings the wheel of time before the seasons ever started the only big difference right now is the showrunner kyle kane will not be returning to the series and they're actually announcing that David uh, Weiner, I believe is how you say his last name, is coming. Uh, he did Homecoming and The Killing. And now hmm. he's going to be taken over as the showrunner for season two. Uh, I had talked to a buddy and he did say like a while back that a lot of the people had left, like producers and stuff, uh, from the original Halo season one. You know, it's so funny. I say original Halo season, but it's like it hasn't even come out yet. Yeah. Um, that they left already saying like, hey, you know, we're done. Now, of course, they could have left because maybe they didn't know if they were going to get a season two and stuff. And it's like, you got to keep working. It's something I've sure. said before. So it's like, you know, I don't I don't take any of that into effect. I'm just like, whatever. It it happens. It happens. I'm just really curious. On, is season one going to end on a cliffhanger? And they're just that's what it's going to be. It's like, oh, cliffhanger. So we had to have a season two. Or is it like no way? It's going to be really good. So now we 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 think it's going to be good. We have faith. I mean, in this. yeah, it it has to be the the second one. It has to be that they have confidence in this show yeah. that it's going to be well received. It's going to be well liked um, and going to be popular. Because honestly, you know, I mean, and they could always walk this back. I mean, yeah. they could you know two or three episodes in if it's not doing the numbers they want, they could say, well, 
you know, we decided we're not going to move forward with the season two. Um, but I do think that, you know, that speaks volumes because at this point, um, you know, we've seen this happen with other shows where maybe after a couple of weeks and it's been getting really mm-hmm. positive critical reception, it's still in this in, in, in its initial run, but it gets a, you know, a, a green light for the next season. Or sometimes even in that like week before the show premieres, when critics are getting it and you start yeah. to get your feedback, you know, critics are starting like, and they're really positive about it, you know, like companies will order, you know, that second season. It's right. not very often especially, I mean, I know this is an IP, but it's not, you know, it's not like an established world. Like Mm -hmm. this is something that, you know, like it's a risk to do this type of show. And so the fact that, you know, they, they not only, you know, made this first season and we saw the trailer for it and it looks really good. I mean, it it looks, um, you know, really well made. And I have to think that they just got such a huge positive response after that trailer that, you know, coupled with the fact of, of what they made that they went, you know what, we think this is going to do some, some awesome numbers for us and we're going to make a season two. And I think getting out in front of it is, is important too for fans because I know there's a lot of fans, myself included, that I don't always like to get invested in new series if I don't know that they're going to continue. Exactly. It's, it's one of those things where it's like, ah, I mean, I, I want to watch this, but, you know, I let me see if it gets any more. And especially exactly. for a streaming service like Paramount Plus that isn't, you know, one of the big three. It's not Netflix. It's not mm-hmm. Hulu. It's not Amazon where, you know, you're still trying to build your subscriber base. Right. And you know, like saying, Hey, there's going to be a season two of this. So subscribe now for season one, like that's a big pull. And so, yeah, I I think this, there's a lot of moving pieces in this, but everything about this story just makes me go, that's exciting. Cause I was interested. I was interested in season one to begin with, but the fact that they've already said we want a season two, I think that's a good sign. You know, and it's something that in a book or the uh, book of Boba Fett review we did with RJ, like you said, they, they cater to new audience. They want to get people like me who don't know enough. And that's what I feel like this show is trying to do. It's trying to cater to people like you who are like, this is interesting. They know sure. people like me are going to watch because we're going to criticize it. We're going to look at it. <laughs> I'm going in there with open eyes. Cause I'm like, you know what? It's the silver timeline. It's separate from my, the halo. I've grown up for this for 21 years now, 20 years now. So it's like, I can live with whatever they give me because I want to see grunts running around elites, yeah. master chief, other Spartans, you are the one that they're like, we need to grab this kind of guy in who's never played the video game, never seen it and see where it goes. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a story that came up late last week and we didn't talk about it because I didn't think it was worth it. But I'm just going to kind of sidebar it right here. Um, Martin O'Donnell, who is the, uh, I say his last name right? Hold on, let me make sure. Martin, o- yeah, Martin O'Donnell is the original composer of the Halo music. Okay. Long story short, he's suing Microsoft. And supposedly he wants to put an injunction in to stop the Halo TV show. These were all rumors. And I think Paramount already green lighting a season two shows that that's all it is. Because if there was any chance that he could somehow put an injunction and stop the season one from coming out, I don't think Paramount would have done a season two. Like, yeah, we want a season two already. Right. And so those, I think were all just rumors. Uh, Long story short, he is mad stating that him and his partner who created the music, are not getting the royalties that Microsoft uh, owes them. Possible, don't know the whole thing on that. The lawsuit came back in, I believe, 2020, and they're still fighting it in court. And, you know, he says that the music's being used in the TV show, and that's why he's gonna he wants to put an injunction on it. I didn't hear any of the music in the trailer, so I don't know where he's getting that information from. But mm-hmm. I don't think, I think if Microsoft is worried at all, or, you know, uh, Paramount was worried at all, they'll just get other composer and write other music for it and just, you know, hey, we didn't use your music. You can't stop it now. So I don't know, some sidebars to it all because it was an interesting yeah. article I read a few days ago and or I think it was like late last week even. But I was like, nah, I don't think he's going to stop the show. And I think this proves it. So for sure. Master Chief, can't wait to see you on March 24th. But yeah, I also it. can't wait to see more of the guy who can't see because you can't see him, John Cena. I don't have his music. I wish I had the music. <laughs> So Peacemaker season one came to a finale uh, as of today or as of Thursday, right? Right. uh, Uploads. Yeah. We're recording on Thursday. So yeah. So it came out, Robert seen it. I'm going to watch it tonight after work. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I'm excited that they have announced season two is happening on HBO yeah. Max. I love the first seven episodes so far of Peacemaker. I yeah. cannot wait to see where they're going to go with episode eight. And I cannot wait to see what James Gunn has planned for season two. That's yeah, I mean, I, I think the exciting news about this, because because this had already been kind of hinted at over the last couple of weeks, James Gunn had had said that, you know, there were plans for a season two, but it's now been officially greenlit. And the most exciting part of that is that uh, it is announced that James Gunn is returning to write and direct the entire season two, just yes. like he did with season one. So I think that's super exciting. I, I think I'm, you know, I really like him. Um, and so definitely on board for that. Uh, I, yeah, I finished the series, um, no spoilers, but I will say that, you know, episode eight, I thought was a, a very satisfying conclusion, um, especially from a character standpoint. And, you know, it had some, uh, some jaw dropping moments. I will just leave it at that. Okay. Just some some moments where I was like, I didn't think they were going to do that. Um, so again, this weasel uh, back. It was cool. It was cool. <laughs> uh, again, no spoilers. Um, but yeah, I, I think this is definitely um, expected. Uh, season one has been super well received. I yeah. think pretty much anybody that's a fan of this type of show. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it's an R rated comedic action superhero show um and if you're a fan of that genre at all i have to imagine you've been enjoying this show um it's oh, super yeah. fun it's been one of the best ones i think it's come out in the last you know the, actually this year because it started this year yeah. i i think it's one of the better ones honestly i know you told me to watch that other show i need to watch that one um I've that's been, a totally different type of show yeah <laughs> i don't like I, that's true action shows though i think this has been one of my favorites i think it's yeah. something that a new ip essentially you know kicking right off from Suicide Squad. And I will say this, not a big spoiler, but because if you've seen Suicide Squad, you know that's where Peacemaker came from. That's where the right. spinoff is. Mm -hmm. I do like that we get references to that movie, actually, throughout this oh, yeah. the whole series. And I'm not going to say how. I, I don't want to spoil that if you haven't seen the movie. But I do like that we were getting those sprinkles of what happened yep. in that movie is still playing out on this character and it's still affecting him. Yeah, so and it I happened like again. That. It happened again in this final episode. There was a little bit, there was a little allusion to something that happened in, in that, uh, in that movie that, you know, uh, as the character was saying it, I was like, Oh, that's, that's funny. Like I was enjoying yeah. that they were making that reference. Um, yeah, that yeah I mean, me right there. there's, there's some jokes that have been seeded since episode one that get mm. payoff in this episode. Oh, good. Um, like some things that they've been like, talking about just like in it that have been recurring jokes but now you actually like get a little bit more of them and again i won't spoil them but it was just like i was like uh i i i was very satisfied that they brought those moments back they didn't need to the show would have been just fine without them mm -hmm. but it was just it was satisfying to kind of get a button on a couple of the kind of nice. long running jokes that have come up several times so um I'm excited yeah it was it was a really fun episode uh and ultimately I am, you know, I'm a fan of the series. I'm excited for a season two. Yeah. I mean, you know what? At the end of the day, we all need to give Peace a freaking chance. <laughs> <laughs> I love well, him in this so much, dude. I yeah. love it. I don't know if we're going to um, give Peace a chance with the next topic. I, <laughs> I don't know either. So moving on from bloody give Peace a chance, need my dove on my stuff guy yeah. to um, the boys. Getting yeah, a, I mean, uh, interesting trailer i'll say it that yeah way. this is, so this is some i i'm i'm still confused as to what exactly this <laughs> is um so this both. is coming this is coming like next month yeah the boys there there's already been announcements of like various spinoffs that they're doing where they're going to do one that's like about an academy it's like about young superheroes kind of thing which i believe is going to be live action but we're getting an animated uh show that's coming like next month on amazon called uh, the boys diabolical and it Diabolical, looks like, Marty. I think, it, it, again, I'm not sure because I don't really know anything about this, um, yeah. but it looks like it's going to be almost anthology style where like each episode is going to be kind of standalone um, right. and explore kind of a different slice of life within the boys universe, whether it be touching on some characters we already know or exploring characters that we haven't met yet. Um, and it looks, you know, it. It, I mean, they they call it out. They say it's from, you know, the creators of the boys or the people that brought you the boys and Invincible. Um, and it looks like a mash between those two. I mean, this is. Oh, yeah. It looks violent as all get out. 
It looks, you know, crazy from a, a story standpoint. Um, I like the first two seasons of Boys. I think they're a lot of fun. Um, more stories in this world, you know, if you tell them the right way, could be super interesting. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I'm interested in this. It looks like we're getting almost like a, a Homelander origin a little bit. Yeah. Um, where we learn about, you know, a little bit more about who he who he was when he first started. Um, yeah, I mean, I... Is this going to be um, insane and crazy? It sure looks like it. Um, and I, I mean, I'll certainly give it a watch. I mean, I'm excited just for the cast. I don't know if you saw it. We got Michael Sarah, Don everybody. Cheadle. Uh, huh? It's everybody. Yeah, everybody. If, if you've heard um, of them, they're in the show. Right? Just, I heard <laughs> that guy. Yeah, he's in it. Uh, Don Cheadle, Michael Sarah, uh, Camille Nan, I cannot say his last name. Camille Nanjiani. Thank you him mm -hmm. um i also saw we have Ken, uh keenan thompson it looked like was in it simon Pegg, justin uh roland i think is how you say his last name kevin smith for all sakes i'm like kevin smith is in this um so i'm just like i want to see this for all these people that i've grown yeah. up with and loving their work so i'm excited to see it like you said it seems like it's an anthology because all the the trailer has like just different parts of everything i feel like it's an origin story maybe of sense of each character uh maybe even like just this is what's going on in like this little corner of the universe by the way because i mean mm -hmm. the boys has a lot going on in it i mean like like you said it's always it's amazing it's going to be like invincible i think a lot too like like you said with having these creators behind it that have worked on the other stuff right you know they're not pulling back they're not going to pull those punches oh it definitely so, not. and i know the boys never pulls punches i haven't watched it yet to be honest but god i know that's bloody <laughs> it's bloody, bloody bloody yeah oh you you haven't watched it I've watched just bits and pieces. I think I've watched like the first two or three still. I don't think I've watched anything past that yet. Okay. Maybe I've watched some of these. Maybe I'll watch season one. I don't think I've watched season. I don't know. I've watched some, so many stuff now. I don't No, I've seen season one now that I think about it. I don't know. Anyway, don't be like me and try to watch random stuff and then get confused on what you watch. It took me a while to realize about Attack on Titan again. Anyway, sidebar. Right. So, but that pretty much covers everything because Robert didn't want to talk about chipmunks. <laughs> no, well, there is one more thing. Oh, is, um, there, is there? Yeah, is oh. and we be sure to yes. check out our previously special edition yes. podcast about the Super Bowl trailers that came out, including the new one for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Right. Um, and there has now been an image going around, an 8K image. So this has been, you know, enhanced enhanced you know it's like i feel like we're you know in one of those old movies where they're doing something that you absolutely <laughs> cannot do with a computer which is you know like take a yes. super blurry footage and just say enhance and then all of a sudden it <laughs> blows it up and makes it clearer i'm like that's not how technology this works. is how technology but, works enhance do, 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 yeah, enhance. Don't worry keep about going it. enhance enhance so um so but anyways uh we had even talked about this moment in the trailer because there's a moment where uh, America Chavez kind of gets attacked, um, or I think no, Wanda, uh, Wanda yeah, gets attacked Wanda. by somebody that is glowing, kind of yellow, orange. Looked a little bit like Captain Marvel. Panther, yes, <laughs> um, looked like it could have been. Yeah, I mean, there were people that were speculating it may have been Killmonger. There's people speculating it might have been uh, the Superior Iron Man. You know, our, a Tony Stark variant. I had speculated that I thought it might have been America Chavez. Um, and this image certainly makes it look like it's Jonathan Did Majors oh. who played He Who Remains in the Loki series and is going to be uh, Kang in the Ant-Man sequel. And right. so we might be getting a version of Kang. And if you know the comics at all, you know, he's time traveling and there's uh, so oh, many wow. Kangs in the universe we even had he who remains kind of telling us that that there were a bunch of different versions of him some who were nice some who were not so nice um and you know some with the ending like yeah with the ending of that series in loki uh we know that the multiverse has been unleashed right we've now seen that and uh so yeah we certainly could be having a version of kang showing up in some sort of action sequence right uh, what do you think about that? Do you think do I you mean, think it's Kang? And if it is Kang, are you excited? I think it's going to be a Kang because Kang the Conqueror won't come out. They said until Ant Man Quantum Quantum 
whatever quantum of quantum um Quant- quantum mania because they just put <laughs> quantum in front of everything i we do i do think that's hilarious i just on a quick sidebar is that i think it was it was ant-man like scott lang who right said that in one of the other movies like you guys just put quantum in front of everything and now yep. he's literally in a movie starred quantum mania yeah so that's what i was like <laughs> quantum of quantum um yep, pretty much yeah i don't so i don't think he's kang the conqueror first of all i okay. think he's going to if he is kang he is a kang there is several Kangs throughout the timelines, like mm-hmm. you said. You know, they've been he's been around for thousands of years the way he works. I am slightly wondering if it is going to be Iron Lad, who is I was a just younger about to Kang. say that <laughs> with 30 basically uh 30, what is it, 30th century tech, I think it's what he uses, or it's like the year 3000 yeah. something. Mm-hmm. So it's like I'm curious if it is him. And so, yes, it could be that character, and they just use de-aging technology, make him look younger. Right. So that and you just let's face it, you just also keep the helmet down. It's like, oh, you never have to really show him for the most part. You could just keep the helmet down and we could put whoever in there. Yeah. And he's a he's a big part of like the Young Avengers. And and Marvel over the last year has just been dropping Young Avengers left and right. Like they're everywhere. (laughs) So if it's anybody, I really think it's him now. I don't know though. Like, I want to know who's on the council more. Like, is this guy part of the council? Is it someone who's attacking the council? Because maybe he's attacking them. Then, yeah, it could be a, just another version of Kang. And we're going to see it in Doctor Strange that he's like, wait, some of the stuff that Wanda did has affected it? Or is it something Loki did? Like, I want to know if Loki's going to show up and yeah. the variant Loki, the one that we know, is going to show up and be like, yeah, I kind of screwed stuff up with my other self loki over here her name's you know loki and it's like sylvie yeah yeah so i don't that's where i want to know like how are we going to connect everything together or is it going to be that dr strange literally has no idea of the events of wandavision and no idea of the events of loki season one that he's just like what the heck is all of this but spider-man no way home makes us think he knows something because he Mm -hmm. even says you know, the multiverse is something we know dangerously little about or of right. or something like that. So right. it's like he knows of it. So I want to know, does he know Loki's tempered with it? Wanda's well, tempered I think with that it? line, I think that line was used in the Spider-Man trailer, but it was not actually in that movie because I think it's in this. It's also in then the Doctor Strange trailer, the first one we got at mm-hmm. the end of No Way Home. I think that's a line from this movie. I think oh, okay. it is possible that he was introduced to the multiverse in the events of Spider-Man No Way Home. Mm-hmm. And so now he's saying, I don't know anything about this. Yeah, um, I need to and, learn everything. And he's kind of, you know, thrown into chaos, if you will. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm with you. Um, if this is a version of Kang, and, and it might not be, as you said, it might not be Kang the Conqueror. Um, it could be Iron Lad, or it could just be another version. I mean, there's... Uh, in in the comics, there's like an entire council of kings. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's hundreds. And of it's them. it could be uh, one of those. Yeah, it could be one of those. And uh, I, I I just if it is Kang, that's exciting because I think that he's a very interesting character, um, and certainly different versions of him, um, you know, could could be very different and play in different ways. You know, this could be a good king the conqueror who does sit on you know this multiverse council um maybe it's even a a precursor to he who remains Mm -hmm. he's you know that version who would eventually become he who remains and in this version he's you know using other people to help him keep an eye on the timelines and eventually he figures out he has to just do it all himself you know so it could be that same that same character that we met in loki just a younger version of himself i mean there's a lot of possibilities um, mm-hmm. about who this could be. I do think, you know, based on that image, it certainly looks like Jonathan Majors. Um, yeah. And so it does seem likely that he's making an appearance a- as some sort of Kang variant. I mean, at the end of the day, though, Marvel is very notorious about editing their trailers and throwing in their goose eggs that nobody knew were goose eggs <laughs> until the movie has come out. Maybe that's what they're doing now. Maybe it's they made him look like that, and really, it is Robert Downey or Tom Cruise being. Yeah, just I mean, Iron Man. We we did famously see like you know uh, the Avengers Infinity War trailer, you know where Thor <clears> wasn't <throat> missing his eye, 
in that, uh, or there was a big, you know, empty space. And I was like, that looks suspiciously, suspiciously like a Hulk sized space. Uh, mm -hmm. But it was because it was when Bruce was in the Hulk buster armor and they didn't yep. want to reveal that. Um, yeah, they've, they definitely um, have taken I a mean, lot of pains to hide spoilers mm -hmm. and things like this. Uh, this is one where I'm not sure that, that they would have swapped his face out. I think they thought maybe no one would, <laughs> would look as closely as they did um and so maybe you know and, yes. and at the end of the day i think there's so much speculation and and ultimately they saw how successful that was with no way home oh yeah with you know like we're going to confirm some but we're not confirming others even though there's rumors about everything and it's making yeah. people want to go see people want to go see is deadpool going to show up in this new movie ryan reynolds says absolutely not but guess what? So did Andrew Garfield. <laughs> so <laughs> that's you know, it's one of those things. It's like we can't trust anybody anymore about who's in what movies. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. They're all scrolls. Are they all scrolls? The only thing I can tell you for sure is that Benedict Cumberbatch is in Multiverse of Madness. I know that. He might 100%. be a hundred percent. He might be a he scroll could, though. Could be. And then we got to worry about be. scrolls again. And then we get a whole invasion. I don't know. I'm curious. I mean, it comes out what May, so we only have to wait about mm -hmm. three more months. Yep, uh, about, two, about two and a half months. Yep. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm excited. So we'll see where it goes. I mean, I also want to know in the comments down below, guys. Who do you think it is? It'll be madness. It will be. So go enjoy those trailers. Go see our other videos. Boba Fett review. Uh, like you said, the trailer breakdown review. Uh, go listen to our podcasts, of course. Uh, High Five, Gaming yeah. Geek right now. Uh, of course, this one, but you're listening to it. So thank you for listening. Yeah. And, and we did have a new, uh, very special Valentine's Day episode of did. High Five that came out this week, um, which was uh, where we were exploring superhero romances. We thought that was a nice tie-in with Valentine's Day. So we talked some Cap and Peggy, maybe some Tony and Pepper. Not going to spoil too many. Maybe Deadpool and Vanessa show up. There's a lot of superhero romances out there and we yeah. got a chance to talk about them. It was a lot of fun. Um, my co-host, Matthew, uh, his wife joined us Aww. and she had her own list. So uh, definitely, you know, check that out. Give a listen to that. Let us know if you agree with what we did, uh, what, romances we chose if you feel like there's some other ones and be on the lookout as well for a peacemaker review um aaron and i are going to yes. be recording that once he gets a chance to watch the final episode um we'll be recording that and dropping that as well to talk about uh the first season of peacemaker um so if you've been watching it uh you know definitely tune in for that if you haven't been watching it go check it out and then come watch our video exactly so go check all that out all that official gygo you can go to the website, officialgygo.com, or YouTube, Facebook, or wherever you listen to podcasts, all at official GYGO. On that note, I'm Aaron. That's Robert. And this is Get Your Geek On. Stay geeky, guys. Bye.